man of sorrows and he's acquainted with our grief. The intensity of those words touched my heart because I realized today that the sacrifice that Christ made was not one that is, is easy for any human being, a man of flesh and blood to make. Because um, most of us are normally afraid of pain, but he was willing to bear and to sacrifice, to suffer all that pain for a greater good, to redeem a relationship that was lost between us and our creator, what great love. And I was so deeply touched that I thought if I don't come today here in front and tell you just how glad I am and how touched and how blessed I feel because someone out there at one point, though many years ago in a point in life, sacrificed for me. He didn't um, judge me because of my sin, but he was willing to die for a sin that was not his. And for that, I just want to say thank you. With this song today, I want us to sing it passionately to him so that he knows we appreciate the great sacrifice that he exuded by his loving, loving act of dying on the cross. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give. But I'm grateful for your mercies, oh my Lord. And I'm grateful for your grace. And because of how you've poured out yourself, I have come to sing this song out in praise. worship you Lord who am I to worship you yeah it's your plan that makes a difference in me and made a way made a way for me to enter your throne Himela. My name is Anseyan and the topic for today is mode of dressing. So my first question is, should we have double standards in terms of dressing? Like should we have two types of dressing, dress your church and dress your home? What is your take? No, uh, my name is Faith Mosby from 3. No, because it's not that because everyone is a Christian that you must not wear the clothes that have come out as the reason fashion. This is because even if one wears a cloth that's fashion, you must wear but you must wear it but in a decent manner. Okay, that is her take. What about you? Mm, my name is Faith Anyango from three. I think we have I think the dress of the mode of dressing should be just the same for 
when you go to church and maybe when you are at home, it should be just be the same. For example, you cannot tell me that you are wearing maybe ragged mini skirts going to while at home, and in church you are wearing long long dresses or long skirts. That's not you. You should be you. Okay, thank you. So my other question is, what is it about indecent dressing? Why are we shunning indecent dressing? What is its effect on ourselves and other people? Or why are we so against it? Okay. <clears throat> my, name, my name is Stella Wamboy and I think we should shun indecent dressing because it, it, it can bring an embarrassment to your family like even to the society, what will they think about you? You should be concerned on how people think about you. You should also shun in this dressing, knowing that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you should, you should know how to dress because you can't tell me that you're doing something good with indecent, with indecent dressing because those, that good thing that you're doing won't be won't be noticed by other people, but the mode of dressing is really, really important than what to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What about you? What's your take? <coughs> oh, my name is Millicent Kadesa, I'm from Pri. I think, the, I think we should shun the way of dressing because it lowers our dignity. It, it, the way you dress, it shows how you are, it can show how, it detects how you are inside and outside your body. So we should wear decently and to avoid embarrassment and to avoid lowering your CV to other people. Okay, thank you Millicent. What is your take? Okay, my name is Michelle Churchi, I'm in Form 3. And my take for this question, it, it, it is that when you are maybe bad, bad clothes or indecent clothes, maybe at, at home, maybe your, maybe your family, you think of you like a good good person, but but others, when you wear maybe bad clothes or indecent clothes, clothes, they think that you are a bad, bad, bad maybe character to their family and their other other their students. Okay, thank you. So, um, what is your advice to your fellow teenagers in terms of dressing, current fashion trends? What can you advise them? Okay. My name is Alfin Tarus. My advice to youth today is to wear decent clothes while in church and at home for respect to their God and respect to their parents. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What about you? Okay, my name is Annabel Bergen. What I can tell the youth is just wear something that is respectable before people. It is not bad to wear something trendy and just be just wear something very respectable in front of us. Okay, thank you. My name is Linda Teren from 3. I think you should wear, what my advice to you is that you should wear decently. Don't show us those things because we too have those things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. You've heard from the girls at Hill School Eldoret. So may your dressing be pleasing to God. Be blessed. Once I was on my way to school, I saw a standboard return, heavenly supermarket. I was very confused. Was I to enter the supermarket or was I to continue with my journey to school? So I took a step of faith and entered the supermarket. On my first shelf, I saw love. I picked up love and put it in my trolley. On my second shelf, I saw joy. I picked up joy and put it in my trolley. On my third shelf, I saw patience. I picked up patience and put it in my trolley. On my fourth shelf, I saw self-control. I picked up self-control and put it in my trolley. By now, my trolley was almost full and I was about to go to the cashier. On my way, as I was going, I saw two things. One, kindness. Two, gentleness. I was very confused. Was I to take kindness and leave gentleness? 
gentleness or was I to take gentleness and leave kindness? Yes, yes, I remembered. Where there is kindness, there is gentleness. And where there is gentleness, there is kindness. So I took both of them and put them in my trolley. By now, my trolley was full and I went to the cashier. On my way, as I was going, on my way, as I was going, I was astonished to see an angel. I asked an angel, do you know my bill? The angel just looked at me and smiled. I asked him again, do you know my bill? Do you know what he told me? He told me sweet words. He told me Jesus paid it all. Solve the puzzle. Instructions are connect all the nine dots with four straight lines without lifting your pen from the paper. I repeat, connect all the nine dots with four straight lines without lifting your pen from the paper. Okay, I believe you have tried that. I believe you have, we, are, you, we can do it now. If you start here as number one, you come to two, I come to dot three, then my dot four will be here. That will help me uh, be able to connect and follow instructions. I move here, line one, line two then i go beyond the limit of the dot number three i join with the other dots and go beyond the limit of dot four then i can join the last line how many lines do i have i have one two three four i've connected the nine dots with four lines, straight lines, and I did not lift my pen. And that one tells us that we can solve any life's puzzle if only we can go beyond the limit. I've gone the limit of the dot. If only I can do, we can do extra. In life, we'll be able to turn impossibilities to possibilities. Days passed by. Finally, 18 I was. The world I had to face. Do's and don'ts were many each day. What's right to do and what's not. But nobody bothered to explain. I sought refuge I couldn't get. Everybody was harsh to me. To my parents I went, and there they were, fighting. Agape I stood and stared in disbelief. Daddy hit mommy, again and again. I couldn't believe it. A panga I seized and shouted at him, hit her again and you are gone. He turned on me and hit me hard. He hit me again. It pained so much. I feared a lot. I trembled. Evening came and there he was again, drunk, wet, a terrible sight. He shouted at everybody, fighting us with everything in sight. I couldn't stand it. In the darkness I ran, seeking refuge. Seeking peace, I sought refuge I couldn't get. Out there in the darkness, the devil in form of a man was waiting. A knife in hand, threatening to molest me or else kill me. Oh no, not this, better death. 
but dying. This young? No, no, I tried to flee. He got hold of me, raised the knife, ready to kill. I feared a lot. I trembled. I screamed. By good luck, someone heard me and rescued me. To my friends, I went, seeking love, seeking refuge, seeking peace. But there the devil was again, tormenting them with drugs, immorality, and AIDS. There they were, emaciated with pain and despair. A terrible sight. I feared a lot. I trembled. I cried. I couldn't stand it. Suffering, dying like my friends. No, no, I must run and seek refuge. To my teachers I went, for they are learned people, I thought. So good I was in class, always at the top. But instead of loving me, guiding me, assuring me, they hated me, they beat me, they abused me. Good for nothing. You'll never make it. A drunkard's daughter. They dismissed me because of my background. I despaired. I lost hope. I gave up and decided to end my suffering. A rope I took and on a tree I tied it. Crying, weeping, agonizing at the pain in my heart. I tied my neck, still crying, ready to die. I looked up, ready to jump to my death. Suddenly, I saw a man approaching. He came closer. Closer, he came. His face shone. His eyes were brighter than the sun. He came closer. Closer he came, the rope he removed and said to me, I died for you. I died for you long ago, long ago, on a hill that was far away. I was tortured and slain down that you may live. I died for you long ago. Yes, Jesus died for me long ago, long ago, on a hill that was far away. He was tortured and slain down that I may live. Jesus died for me long ago. Jesus died for you long ago, long ago, on a hill that was far away. He was tortured and slain down that you may live. Jesus died for you long ago. Finally, I have found the refuge I've sought for too long. We have been here in Hill School in Eldoret. We have learned a lot about divine transformation. Yes, divine transformation. That in order for us to soar to the heights, we need to get rid of every weight, be transformed for us to reach our divine destiny. We know and we are sure that you also at home have learned a lot about this transformation. Remember to follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram at Royce for Christ. Also, if you'd like us to visit your school, contact us on the numbers appearing on your screen. God bless you. Until next Saturday, what would you tell all those who watching us from home to watch Zero on MBCI TV. Yeah!